Uh, welcome to the session, uh, Business Impact Delivery Using Test Automation by Iran Barlov. Uh, we are, we are really glad that they could join us today. Uh, and yeah, uh, without further delay, over to you, Iran. Thank you so much. So, um, hey everyone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Eran Barlev. I'm a software engineer uh, for over 20 years now. And um, I'm currently working for Apply Tools. So it's a visual testing tool, but uh, we're not gonna talk about this today. We're gonna talk about the automation world and why it is uh, important for every business uh, to shift towards uh, automation. <clears throat> uh, but I would recommend looking into this tool after this uh, talk, or even we can chat about it later on uh, in the Hangout room. Um, I founded the, the Canadian Software Testing Board, which is part of the ISTQB. Um, I lived in Canada for 10 years. Now I'm based in California. Sorry, I didn't say that at the beginning. Um, and my true passion is automation. Um, I'm automating everything at work from web, mobile, desktop applications, all the way through home. Uh, my entire home is uh, wired with every smart device I can talk to. Um, I believe I'm, I'm very passionate about it, like I said. Uh, I think it makes our lives easier. And obviously, it makes our <clears throat> uh, work easier when we automate it and when we automate our processes um, uh, right. And it improves um, our uh, business outcomes. And that's uh, that's the goal, basically, at the end of the day um, uh, for our employers. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, why is it basically uh, important and where do we start, basically, uh, when we are looking at uh, automation. So um, if we're looking back um, to uh, the year 2000, uh, since then, uh, more than 50% of uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, disappeared. Uh, the reason for that is that they didn't catch up with, uh, with the, the digital world, we'll call it, or the, the technological shift. Um, they needed to move rapidly and to catch up with you know, the increasing demand uh, from the end users, uh, from their customers. And businesses that didn't catch up lost to competition that did automate processes and improve their uh, digital uh, footprint. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So what is um, software uh, test automation? Um, it's basically a software testing method, which, is, uh, which uses other tools uh, to test the software that you've built. Uh, we have expected results in mind, and we are putting uh, our system through this automated process that's normally uh, uh, time-consuming, uh, it's normally repetitive, and we're trying to automate everything that we're doing manually. So today, a lot of companies uh, are still doing a lot of manual testing. Um, we've seen a uh, major change, obviously, in the past few years, um, where organ large organizations uh, move towards some extent of uh, test automation, but they're not at the full, you know, uh, uh, coverage, I would say. Uh, of, of course, when you uh, uh, get to that uh, uh, high um, rate of coverage, uh, this is where you'll see most benefit of um, your uh, test automation investment. Now, um, the, the traditional uh, product um, life cycle, um, is constantly shrinking. Now, when I'm saying uh, shrinking, uh, I'm talking about where it used to be uh, years or months to release a product update. Uh, we're now seeing that being shrunk to days uh, or even sometimes hours. Um, I, I used to work for a CICD provider um, a few years ago, and uh, the, the need there for constantly de delivering the CICD uh, 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 concept uh, means that they want to push things uh, to market as soon as they're ready. So in order to achieve that, they have to have all the moving pieces from the code, through the testing, through the deployment, everything connected with zero friction. 
And testing was a big part of it because you don't want to hit the publish button before you got your uh, test coverage. And this is why QA was tend to be um, uh, the bottleneck because we, we used to stop everything until we're done with our testing. So we don't want to be that bottleneck. And this is why it's the pressure is on us to basically uh, uh, automate uh, our tests. Now, the consumers, our customers, uh, they demand for a high degree of responsiveness. This means that um, our traditional uh, go-to-market cycles has to be uh, shorter, like we mentioned earlier, and uh, we need to also be able to uh, respond fast. Uh, the problem is, if we do not respond fast, uh, our customers have so many alternatives alternatives today, right? I mean, if you go to a website and you try to buy <clears throat> to buy something, sorry, um, it doesn't work. You don't give it a second chance anymore. You jump back to Google and you move to the next uh, result or the next provider. Or there's, you know, if for example in Amazon they don't deliver it the, the next day, you'll just keep on looking until you find the vendor that does deliver the next day. Um, so that's a lot of pressure on businesses, and uh, this is why we have to uh, 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 streamline the entire operation. Now, it is so complex um, because our consumers are consuming our brand uh, across everywhere. And what we're seeing here is basically not only our uh, infrastructure, our system itself uh, became complex with uh, millions of microservices that we have internally, uh, the complexity adds up and the, the permutations are becoming infinite in terms of what operating systems are, our end users are uh, consuming us on. And speaking of operating systems, of course, of course, each of them has its own version. Um, uh, on top of that, we have the browsers that everybody's using. And this is just obviously a partial list. And multiply that by the number of devices and, and screen sizes that they're consuming it, all the way from an iWatch to, to your TV, uh, from Xbox to Switch, from your iPhone to your uh, PC. Like, it's infinite. And they're demanding the same service from your website, through your, your uh, mobile app, uh, through your uh, phone application, for example. And again, the pressure is on us, on QA team, because we need to automate all of that and to be able to give the thumbs up to go to, uh, to, go to production. There is another team member in that life cycle. So there is the developers and there is the, the QA team, but there's also the DevOps engineers. The dev DevOps are kind of like the glue that puts everything to, that puts everyone together. Um, it is uh, uh, obviously gaining uh, high pop uh, uh, popularity in the software development world in the recent years. Um, and what they're doing is, like I said, they're connecting the dots between everyone, making sure that this pipeline is streamlined perfectly from uh, the build of the project, from the testing of the project on staging. And when all the systems are green, all the thumbs are up, uh, we're pushing to uh, production. So there is also uh, that uh, piece of the puzzle. Now, I mentioned earlier about uh, investment, and there is a, a, obviously a, a high upfront investment. And the initial phase of the automation, um, it, 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 it will pay up for itself very quickly. Uh, the minute we start seeing uh, time savings, and not only that, but also catching bugs that you and I cannot achieve by using manual testing, because in manual testing, we're limited to the number of hours and the number of resources that are assigned to, uh, to a certain um, task. But with test automation, the machine can run over and over again without getting tired and without missing out on any uh, small piece that's broken in the system. Uh, you and I will miss out, you know, a small icon missing at the footer of the page, but the machine not. You and I will miss a typo, but the machine won't. So uh, when we're, we need to put more uh, uh, focus on letting the machine test and try to give the machine more uh, power to evaluate our software, uh, and we will orchestrate all of that. We will look at the test results, we will set the expected result, and we will maintain it uh, um, as we go along. Now, um, a, a huge um, impact of the success of the whole process is by choosing the right uh, tools. 
Um, so instead of you know going shopping and choosing uh, what uh, tools we need to uh, uh, use, we need to first look inside and understand what are we trying to solve here. Uh, on top of that, we need to look at the team and understand what are their skills, uh, what skills are in the market. Uh, you know, you don't want to pick a niche tool that no one else uses, uh, and then you it will be you know very hard to find uh, team members who can operate that tool, who can write scripts for it, for example. I've seen a lot of cases where large organizations uh, create their own flavor of you know uh, open source tools. And uh, it's very hard for them to find people who wants to use it. And then so at some point, sometimes open source projects are dead. And then the enterprise is now kind of owning it because the community doesn't maintain it anymore, but they base their entire test automation framework around it. So that's, um, so that's, uh, that's a huge risk. Uh, so it's very tricky. And you have, to, like I said at the beginning, you have to ask yourself, what's my goal? What do I want to test? And what's the most commonly used tool uh, in the market? It doesn't have to be open source and free. Of course, it's ideal. Um, but sometimes you might want to go with the paid tool. Uh, there are advantages for that. I mean, you get proper support. You get, uh, you know, uh, uh, constant updates coming out. And uh, the community won't drop the ball on it. Um, and then you'll be stranded with a tool that no one maintains. And now it's up to you. Or you'll have to switch to another tool, uh, which is a headache by itself migrating from one tool to another. So tools is one. Second is language, right? I mean, these are the most popular uh, uh, languages in the, in the software testing uh, field, I will say. Um, JavaScript is on top, Python right after that, Java, Java and C Sharp. There is, you know, the, there, there are more after that, but these are the most commonly uh, uh, used languages. Uh, so make sure that your team is familiar with them. And, you know, they, if not, it's most of them are easy to pick up. Um, uh, especially for uh, test scripting uh, um, capabilities. So the scope that we're going for, um, you should never aim for 100% test automation. Uh, uh, in many cases, it's not even an ideal situation because uh, there are you know, parts of the application that has more impact on the business and other parts that have less. Um, some test cases might be better handled through manual testing uh, and automation just add additional burden on those cases. Uh, sometimes the, the effort you're putting on uh, to test a certain component that's used maybe half a percent of, of your users um, is not worth it. So you have to understand even and work with product to, to put priorities on where do you start and what coverage uh, are you going for. Uh, try to stay away from that 100%. It's just, I've never seen that actually uh, happen or even uh, the goal. Um, now, once you implement your test framework, it's not done. It's not like a one-time effort. I've seen companies make a mistake by asking R&D to set up the test framework for the QA team, which was manual, uh, manual testers, and just tell them, okay, prepare the test framework for the manual tester that all they need to do is hit the run button but it doesn't end there because the, the product keeps on changing. So you need to keep changing or catching up uh, with your test framework. So this means that you can't have uh, uh, all manual testers on your team that just click the, the run button. You have to have automation uh, test automation engineers on your team that can add it uh, uh, and modify or add uh, new scripts, new use cases, or modify them when your uh, website or application changes uh, and keep up with that. <clears throat> now, in order to um, pick the right uh, framework, like I said, you need to understand what you're looking at. So here is an example of you know, uh, frameworks and tools that are out there in the market. Um, they're open source, um, free, and you can use them today. Um, obviously, we're at the Appium Lite conference, so Appium is one of them, focused on mobile devices. Um, Selenium is geared towards web uh, testing. Uh, Robot Framework um, is more of a keyword-driven. You have like a, a table of fields where you can define you know, the URL you're going to, the, the, 
the values are going to send to certain fields and so on and so on. So it's kind of like an elaborated Excel sheet uh, testing approach. Um, and Cucumber is uh, another tool. It's called uh, the, the tool category. It's called BDD, uh, Behavior, uh, Behavior uh, Driven Design, which means that you are writing uh, the story of the test or the, the use case in literal world words that we can understand, such as user enter website, add product to cart, check out a product from cart, uh, enter credit card, login, and so on and so on. You literally build a storyline and that story is translated into your scripts that you someone has to write them behind the scenes. So all these at the end of the day, behind, um, uh, behind them, um, uh, there is uh, scripting required. Uh, these are not the record and playback tools that are in the market. Um, they're great. Um, uh, we're using uh, quite a few of them, um, but they're good for certain uh, use cases. Uh, at some point, you um, uh, you encounter more complex scenarios where you need uh, full control, for example, of the application, um, and for that, you will need uh, uh, a test automation engineer that can actually write um, a script. I think I'm just in time. We have four four minutes, right? Two minutes. Questions? Let's look at the chat here. Yep. Okay. So folks, so that you, can, here. you can ask the questions in q and if uh, you have some. Till that time I can ask one. Uh, uh, with with the languages that you mentioned, like JavaScript, it looks like uh, a developer already knows these languages. So do you, yes. what's your opinion on a, a QA engineer doing the automation versus uh, giving that responsibility to the developers themselves? Oh, that's a very loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it's the right thing to do. Um, QA and developers, you know, I used to joke, they're like dogs and cats, like they never get along because they have a different mindset, right? Yeah. They yeah. look at things differently. The developer just wants to, you know, finish writing new features. That's all they're obsessed about. Where yeah. QA, we're, you know, we're more uh, geared towards it has to be perfect. It has to work. I'm, I'm paying attention to this, you know, the smallest details. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not saying ing software engineers don't do that, but they have a different goal in mind. So when you're obsessed with a new feature you're working on, you're going to miss out on, oops, I broke something else on the way of building that new feature. Yeah. Um, so let the developers build their stuff. QA, uh, you know, automation engineers uh, will build our stuff. Um, and this is, and, and, and the DevOps, the, the, the third leg of this uh, party, right? Yeah. Uh, it's somewhere in the middle as well, uh, which is another engineer. Um, and together we, 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 we are better, literally. Um, like I said, if you leave it to R&D, and I've, I've seen quite a few organizations where they actually have R&D uh, build the test automation and the testers have no idea. So I meet with them once in a while and I tell them, okay, let's start a new use case. And they're clueless. Right, and it's the worst thing that you can have. You have a team of ten testers; none of them can run the test. They can run it, they can analyze the test results, but they cannot add new use cases. So you're wasting R and D time to write use cases instead of spending time on training your QA team on you know those languages that are in front of us and yeah. teach them. Like it's, literally, you can do it in a two-day classroom. Right? I mean, it's not that hard just yeah. to read it and to know basic. Things. You don't have to know Java programming, object-oriented, inside and out, and understand all the design patterns to yeah. get started, yeah. right? Uh, lastly, I mean, thanks, Iran, for sharing uh, your experience with us today.